What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Italian Football TV. Uh, obviously, we can't start this podcast without our thoughts going out to Joe Barone, uh, director, general manager of uh, Fiorentina, but also a very close friend to uh, all of us here, as he's from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, very close to the family. Unfortunately, there's been a tragedy. Uh, Atalanta Fiorentina was postponed because he had a heart attack and was rushed to the hospital. Now, from everything that we're reading, it's been critical conditions. And um, for all of us here, we want to send our uh, best wishes and prayers and love and strength to Joe because he's a strong person. He's a strong man. And especially to the Barone family, who we're very close with. We, we grew up together in, in Brooklyn. You know, I know Joe for the last 50 years. And we were in the neighborhood in Brooklyn. So we play soccer in, in Brooklyn. And he, I went to St. Francis. He went to St. Francis after me. You know, we, I coached St. Francis for a few years. Um, Joe was uh, uno di noi. You know, when you go to the stadium and sometimes behind uh, the goals, you say uno di noi, it's one of us. Joe was one of us. You know, regular, he still is one of us. A so. regular guy, yeah. you know, that... Um, you know, you can uh, you can meet him uh, at uh, have coffee with him, have a cappuccino. He's always available, always smiling, always uh, uh, um, ready to. Um, you know, he's one of the guys from the neighborhood that we grew up together. So one thing I wanted to just say that uh, I remember just a few seconds ago, like it was uh, just uh, this morning, uh, we were uh, having coffee at Villa Bat, and uh, Joe was like, "Hey, Ando, what's going on?" It's like nothing. It's like a regular. Uh, he's, this guy's a big gun, but uh, it makes you feel like you're the best, uh, the best uh, person on the world. We're sharing the coffee at Villa Bate. We take a bunch of pictures. We're mm. talking about a bunch of BS. Yeah, he was also and uh, laughing around and uh, yeah. Go ahead. Man. And I was just gonna say he's always big, been part of the community too. Brooklyn Italians. He's been uh, throughout. Uh, he's been one of the main guys over there uh, till he went to Fiorentina, of course. And uh, we're very close with his kids also we grew up with their kids mm. playing soccer so it was more than just him it was his family also that we're also very close to uh still today mm. so it's for the people that don't know him he's a great guy he's like just just like uh, the regular one of these guys hang out watch mm. his culture just like the rest of us and he's just one of the guy that everyone knows and loves pete <coughs> you want to say something? no yeah i mean obviously our heart goes out to, to his family and that we're praying for him you know, and as everyone else says, we all have a memory with him. Mm -hmm. I was just actually with him a couple months ago in Firenze. I went oh, to yeah. go see the Viola Park, mm. you know, and he was just showing us around uh, the whole Viola Park. We went to go watch a couple of Fiorentina games. So like super hospitable, uh, you know, made you feel at home. And it's really, really a sad, you know, when the news broke, we were all like in shock. So, you know, we're, we're, pulling for him and and we're praying for him and and like Gaetano said we want tomorrow morning to wake yeah. up and mm -hmm. we hear good news and, okay. th and that's that let's stay well positive said. and maybe uh we'll have something uh, great to talk about it uh, maybe tomorrow why not yeah. well said um not always easy to transition from this but uh we do have football which mm -hmm. is not as important but we're important to us here at this table mm -hmm. Um, sorry for you, Peter, that I did have this listed as the first topic, but we didn't get mm. to talk about Inter mm. going out of uh, Champions League to Atletico Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, something that it, this man to our left, Antonio, was celebrating and very excited for, and he treated us to a dinner because dinner he did it. say on the podcast he predicted Atletico to go through, and he said if it does happen, he'll take us out to a dinner. We took a, we got him off the hook because he said steak dinner. And we yeah. didn't go for the steak. But I ended up getting some tacos. We had people adding us, uh, adding Peter Lugers in they our comments <laughs> <laughs> because right after the game, because they wanted him to take us there, uh, which is funny. But Peter. Listen, if Peter Luger was five minutes away, I have no problem. I will be, you know what? The, the, being so delighted, so happy that Inter gets eliminated in the Champions League. <laughs> there is, you don't know the joy that an AC Milan fan, not any, any you guys, but if you're an AC Milan fan, you live for those things. You live for things like that to happen because, you know, it makes you a sad life. It's how, how, how sad it's one of the Milan most, has fallen it, to that it's point. unbelievable. You know? Unbelievable. You We'd like to fall down as, ma as many times as possible seeing Inter just been... Uh, under this kind of a miserable time and uh, 
Yes, you know, and we might win the, the Scudetto versus Milan. Oh, so by the way, did Lautaro, uh, did Lautaro wash his underwear? Because I've seen pictures. <laughs> I've seen pictures around that he soiled himself before the penalty. <laughs> soiled. What? Is that right? I, I don't know. I don't go through his, other people's laundry. <laughs> well, somebody so. said. Water is hot. No, neither do I. Neither do I. Somebody, like somebody, somebody show me the picture. Somebody show me some right, social media uh, picture. Uh, nobody wants to see uh, on the uh, way. Uh, Wait, Gaetano, as an outsider, seeing Anto say this about Inter and Milan in Europa League, what does this what does this say to you? Because you were smirking a few times. I don't know what you were thinking. No, you know, he's not the only one. Hmm. Oh yeah. Um, there are. Plenty. Uh, if you're a tifoso, uh, you know that's that's where they are. You know, if a, an Italian team mm. plays against an English team, they would rather go with the English team yeah. than uh, the than rivals. No, 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 you're wrong. I'm the, sorry. Than, I gotta correct you. Italian. If only for AC Milan, only when Inter. How about Juve? Juve, we don't care. Really? Yeah, but Inter. If you're an AC Milan fan, believe me, your DNA okay, okay. is being built in a way. Far. To say to you, as soon as you're bored, you need to hate only Inter. Understood. So who cares about Juventus and everybody Peter. else? For, me, for us, it doesn't count. We could break it down a little bit, but yeah. um, I've seen this narrative go out that it's uh, this season could be seen as a failure just because of Champions League. Mm. Um, personally, I don't think it is a failure. I think your goal was to get the second star, and Champions League was a realistic goal because of last year. What do you make of this season as a whole? First off... You know, no one could put an objective to win a Champions League unless you're spending the money of Man City and Real Madrid or these big teams that have broke, you know, the bank. Inter, if you look at half of their team, starting 11, they came for either free or less than $10 million. So right there, it's a well put together team, but not a team that should aspire every year to win a Champions League. You should try to go as far as possible. And obviously it was a big disappointment um, you know, to lose at this stage of the Champions League because definitely we could have probably gone far. But I think the objective, if we want to be clear, is to win the Scudetto and was to win the Scudetto and we're nearly there. Um, 99.9. You know, yeah, I mean, 14 points up unless there's this huge debacle, which I don't see. Inter is going to win the Scudetto. They're going to get the second star. And I think it's still uh, a point to use or jump on for the next year where you can say, hey, you know, we made the Champions League final the year before. We've won the Super Copas in the, in the past. Now we won the Scudetto. Let's build on top of it. Where do you think the blame lies? This is a question for everybody. We go around. Where does the blame lie for Inter going out of the Champions League? There's a few options you mentioned. Lautaro. Uh, I, would, I would say that for me, Turam deserves more to be talked about for the chances that he had in the second leg mm -hmm. than... Lataro does. Mm -hmm. The penalty kick, the game was already lost at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it that? Is it the Inzaghi, the way that he managed the game? Is it Inter not getting good enough backup strikers? Or is it just simply you went up against an Atletico Madrid side? You, you know, they didn't lose 4-0. They lost in penalty kicks to a top team that will probably go further. Mike, where do you think it comes down to? I, think, I don't think it's just one factor. I think it's uh, a mixture of a few. Uh, the first one is... One not being on Inter, they, they played great on the first leg, but the biggest thing that they were missing, they weren't clinical at all. If they should have comfortably put away their chances, they would have walked in the second leg and more of managed the game rather than still playing the game. So I think that's where it started off. And uh, then from there, it's Inzaghi's substitutions where he thought he can close off the game being it one goal away by bringing in defenders. And when Atletico did score that goal, that's when they were struggled because at that time when they were chasing a goal, most of their team had full of defenders that couldn't really attack. So you were asking it for to go with a penalty mm -hmm. shootout. And at that point, it's it's a coin toss. So I don't think it's just one thing. I think it is a few reasons. Yeah, you've you've all, you had a strong opinion on this game. So I said it in the last podcast. What I said is if Inter, if you go into the game believing that you're going to win this game, believing that you're the better team, believing that you can attack and you can put pressure on this team you can win this game. And that's what they did in the first half. And you're winning one nothing plus one nothing. You're winning two nothing. But what happens in the second half? For 30 minutes, for 30 minutes, they pass the ball back to the goalkeeper. Okay? They tr they thought that they would they were going to put the game to sleep by passing the ball back. And it backfired on Inzaki. Mm. 
And to me, that that was the reason why you can miss shots. Everybody misses shots. Mm-hmm. You know, every... Uh, I'd like to go uh, miss a lot too, to be yeah, fair. Every forwards miss, miss shot. They, they, so to me, it's your mentality and the way that you approach the game. I thought that he started pretty good. You're winning one nothing. You did everything right. But then the second half, your approach to pass the ball back and give up on the game. Uh, I, I think that if he would have put pressure and he would have played the same way, I, I think you, you know, Is that an you experience? Would've, you would have... Is that you, just experience of, you know, Inzaghi's still relatively a young coach. He was at Lazio. He, we've we've watched him develop from at Inter over these last two years where he made mistakes. Now he's on to win a Scudetto. Is no, it that? But he, he had, I mean, he's, he had enough experience. He's been in Serie A now for a while. And, you know, you know this type of games. You know that... They have the talent to hurt you. I mean, they don't have a lot of talent. In the first half, they only have Griezmann that can hurt you. But then in the second half, the guy, he was very smart. He put Correa, who is a good player, uh, with Griezmann. And there was uh, the pie. The pie. I mean, the guy is is, is an incredible player. And and he made, to me, uh, Cholo made all the right moves at the right time. Uh-huh. And Insaki did not make the right moves at the right time. I think that if he would mm. still push and he still wanted to win the game and be aggressive and win all the 50-50 instead of going all the way back and mm. you, know, you sooner or later they're going to score. And they do. You yeah. know, sooner or later you're going to get a goal. Uh, Gatano, I hate to do the Monday morning Monday morning quarterbacking, but if Insaki will have just pull it through with to the 90th minute where they will have just move on to the next round nobody will be saying at all Inzaghi he played uh, this but he didn't uh, listen is the, that's the point that's the point so being over here the next day and uh, trying to trash what Inzaghi could have done should have done must have done whatever the case might be I think it's I think he did the right thing, but uh, he, he backfired on him just for the fact that uh, he didn't he didn't uh, materialize. Because uh, you know, if you would have just continued attacking and uh, Atletico would have scored regardless, and then you would have say he should have put the defenders inside. So there is always the flip coin of the uh, of the medal. So what I say is, for me, is pure bad luck because for five extra minutes. Inter will have just walked out of the, the Wanda, the Wanda, whatever the name of the, the stadium is, with uh, going to the next round, going, going to the quarterfinal. Now, it didn't work out, but uh, I'm not going to fault Inzaghi for that. I think he did it the best he could. The only mistake to me, that if I would point a finger to him, that he took Bastoni out. And Di Mar- That's Di Mar- only and Mar- Bastoni That's only were... I thought so, they, were, they were big moments. The rest, the rest, you know, when you're trying to defend and you want to try to uh, to take the, the, the game, uh, il risultato, we said, we'll put the risultato a casa, you want to take the game yeah, and, uh, and the results at home. I think he did a, a pretty good job. Now, to, uh, to, to go back to you, Pete, your, your analysis, you twisted everything into no, a pretzel. I didn't, I didn't even make an analysis. No, I'm just twisted, saying objective. I know. You twisted everything into a pretzel because up to last week, Inter was on the full run for the Champions League and all the rest of that. By who? By you. You were never not the Interist because you, you already won the Campionato. You put the Campionato on the side and then you you thought that you were fully concentrating on uh, on going to the Champions League. But, uh, you know, it didn't work out. Pure bad luck. Then Gary happened because, he, you know, being an AC Milan fan, it's the best thing that it you're I think you I think reminding us on I think you're twisting it a little bit. More so, yes, the fans, we have all the hope in the world that, hey, we have 16 point advantage in Serie A. If we can, you know, win this game or get through, now we can really focus for Champions League where we can rest mm-hmm. mm. players in Serie A and we'll be fresh. That is true. But as far as an objective of Inter, you cannot say the objective is to win the Champions League. Listen, We're not it, it at took, that it took Manchester of a, City and Guardiola a, how long, and they only won last year. Yeah, but they a billion exactly. dollars. Okay, but so we, you're investing a lot of money. But so, no, but, but also Inter is not at the level of, uh, for example, Real Madrid. Right, I watch Real Madrid's games against uh, RB Leipzig, where they didn't play well. They conceded a lot of opportunities. Leipzig weren't able to make them capitalize on them. But then they have a player that's so world class, like Vinicius Junior, that could, for okay, no yeah. problem. I solved the game. Inter doesn't have that world. Lataro and Turam are very good for Serie A, not to take anything away from them, but they're not at that Champions League level quality of, let me make a difference in the most important moments. Mm-hmm. The strength of this Inter has been the group. It's been everybody together that's made them better. They screwed up in the first leg, 
with the one yeah, zero to score. because Atletico is a different team at home. I think Inter Listen. is much stronger this year and I think it could have taken the Champions League. To me personally, Inter could have won the Champions League. They have a better team. They have a team that is a little bit more mature. They have the Marco. They have a spectacular okay, but, mm-hmm. group, like you said. It's not just individuality. This is a group that really was working on 12 cylinders at the same time. But I think a lack of a concentration got them into the, this predicament that, that they are now uh, found themselves to be eliminated to the quarterfinal. You know, uh, that's Listen, that's sad. That's I, very sad, but it's reality. You cannot really lose concentration on those I games. Mean, you, you could have won. And I disagree. Excuse me, Mar- uh, Marco. I disagree with you about Inter being not as good as Real Madrid or Manchester City. That's wrong. I think Inter can take just about anybody. Mentality I'm wise, all all it's not mentality. Simply quality, simple, quality of player. They don't player. have the game changing player to help win your Champions League. I'm not saying that you can't win it, right? Where the way that they went to the final. But it makes a big difference when you talk about expectations. Yeah. Anyway, and I say the same thing. The, you could win something, but it's the objective. Now, just my take on the Inter game. I think Inzaghi, after a certain point, had a very calculated approach to say, okay, we got to kill time. Let's just manage the game a little bit. And then I'll put my, my cards on my team defending and be able to maintain. In Italy, you might be able to do it. Versus Porto, you might be able to do it. But when you deal with teams that can bring on Depay, Correa, and they're coming at you and they're at home, you know, it's very hard, especially when it takes just one mistake. Mm-hmm. And we saw that. I think Inzaghi, his his substitutes were, you know, substitutions, you know, like Antonio said, why take out Bastoni? Why, you know, Di Marco? You don't have a, a true left back that mm-hmm. can come in and replace because Carlos Augusto was out. I think it also shows Inzaghi's, you know, uh, being stuck in that formation. I think also during the extra time where Darmian is not a true left back, you had a Buchanan on the bench that he was scrambling. He might have even made the sub. So it also sh- kind of showed the state of mm-hmm. of uh, confusion. confusion, maybe, yeah. that Inzaghi was at where he just it reached that point and he didn't know what to, to do at anymore because his game plan was... Mm-hmm. Literally mm-hmm. tossed. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You know, obviously, Inzaghi mentioned, like, we have to be more clinical. We score certain goals, especially away. You are all of a sudden have a, <clears throat> uh, you know, a, a gasp of air, you know, and able to, and able to, to get through to the next stage. But, uh, you know, Inter, the first 20 or so minutes, played a good game, I think. But you need to play for mm-hmm. 90 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go on to the next topic. Stupid topic. Mm-hmm. I hate that we have to talk about this. But before we get to the Italian national team, we got to talk about who got kicked off the Italian national team today. Uh, Acerbi, center back of Inter, uh, got kicked off from Spalletti from the national team. You didn't You didn't hear the story? No, I have the list of, of uh, players. He, he just got kicked off today, today this the morning. <laughs> uh, because yesterday he got into an encounter with Juan Jesus of uh, Napoli. Oh, and yeah. uh, I read that. he made a, a racial uh, slur Apparently. towards Juan Jesus. Yeah. And um, and Juan Jesus told the referee. He made it clear. Then Acerbi dug his own grave because he came out saying, all right, I didn't say anything. This is crazy. That Those words never came out of my mouth. Which Juan Jesus said, we can leave it on the field. Let it be bygones be bygones. Juan Jesus then came out saying, if you're going to deny it, I thought you were going to at least own up to your words, at least own up to what you said. So now Juan Jesus has come out uh, doubling down on it that Acerbi did say it. The Italian Federation, uh, along with Luciano Spalletti, decided Acerbi is a distraction. He doesn't want uh, this player on the team for saying that. Um, Inter said that they're going to do their own investigation. The reports are that he could be banned from Serie A for 10 games, maybe even more, Acerbi, for what he said. Just a stupid moment from uh, from Acerbi that uh, it's it's unreal that th- the way that he went about it too afterwards. Yeah, it's horrible, and uh, you gotta you gotta give a, a round of applause to Juan Jesus that really targets that. I didn't like how even for him to have the courage to not even he was saying in his Instagram post by not bringing it up, bringing it up, it made a big deal of it. If Acerbi owned up to it, but I, you have to target these things from the roots, so these things are aired out and people know about it. And you, this should be this disciplinary um, 
sanctions for stuff like this because we don't want to see things like this all the time and i'm really disappointed on Cherby to be honest because he, he he's like one of the leaders for inter and also he battled through a lot of stuff in his past also so hopefully oh, if he does what did he battle in the past man? Testicular, testicular cancer, cancer. Testicular twice cancer. I think. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. two yeah right twice well also the the fact that he, you know they uh think he thinks it's just a way he's like oh i was just trying to throw him off his game yeah, or it's stuff like that's that said on the field uh it's completely completely different yeah do you think you're ever going to see even charity play for inter again at this point well listen let's first see how everything carries out he's still <clears throat> you know he's still a starter for inter so i don't see a reason why he can't the next next year maybe not a starter but also to be a, a bench component he's part of the italian national team even if he was taken off for these uh for these american games it's not something that we want to see especially on inter that you know we're brothers of the world right that's the claim you sure. know there's there's players from all over the the you know the world um playing for inter but you know that i'm sure Cherby has played with so i think Sometimes you can get caught up in the moment, but in no way is that an excuse for, for certain things. And, you know, if he did do something, I think it's a matter of just owning up to it yeah. and, you know, taking the the penalty or whatever it is and then saying, hey, you know what? I learned from my mistake. Take accountability. Well, he's, it, yeah. well, he's gone the complete opposite yeah, route. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's with, all the camera, with all the cameras and the microphones and the audio and everybody. That's, that is an audio too? I mean, I'm sure, right? He could, because even the, there's the know. there's so many cameras that are there. And they even have them on, on video not, afterwards and before, and you see what Juan Jesus says. So uh, I think when Inter does that, just my guy, I have a feeling that if they if they do prove it, Inter, you're not going to see a chair be there. Let me ask you something. Uh, maybe something. This is a question for everybody. It's a topic. Uh, if you are the referees, and Juan Jesus, Juan Jesus says, says to you, ref, he called me this. So what what do you do? During the game, the game was still going during on. During the game, how does the referees know? I was saying if Juan Jesus told him, <coughs> told the referee, yeah, yeah, yeah but which how he does did. the referee which he did. know that he really did? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think any player about, can go and say, yeah. okay, he told me this. No, but wait, but how do you prove? I it? think Gaetano, total call is investigation Gaetano. after Gaetano. the match, yeah. but you do after bring it up to the superior. But yeah. after the match, listen not during the match, nobody on the right state of mind goes to the referees while there is something going on. Says, hey, by the way, insisting he called me this. You don't do that. It's just that it's very obvious that something must have gone on that mm. the guy insisted and he yeah. pointed to the referee and said, hey, he told me, he mm. called me this. Yeah, so but it's a hard decision. It, it, didn't get, it didn't get to that point because yeah. Juan Jesus, like he was saying, which I don't think Juan Jesus uh, should should do that, uh, is say, oh, it's all right, it's fine. Let, yeah, let's it's just, sure. he should target let's just, it. Let's just keep spot. going. Exactly. Uh, and then he, he ended up scoring uh, the goal. The equalizer. Um, so just a stupid situation for everybody. Let's move on to the Italian national team call-ups because that's what we wanted to talk about. And maybe we'll see Buongiorno stepping in for Acerbi in the back line, which I actually think could work out a lot better. And Mancini got called up instead of uh, Acerbi, right? Yeah, which for is... I don't, no, I don't I'm just know. saying, no, since he got, he got sent all home. <laughs> anyway, uh, Luciano Spalletti made the call-ups. There were some surprising ones. Uh, I wanted to get everybody's reaction. Some merit-based and then some not. Yeah, exactly. Nicolo Zagnolo, still part of the squad. He's got two goals for Aston Villa. Didn't really expect him to be there. He did leave off Scamacca and Chiro Immobile. Scamacca, not for uh, his lack of ability, but he hasn't been playing consistently with Atalanta as a starter, but also just motivation-wise. Spalletti's made it very clear, also with the Cherby, he wants good people, but he doesn't want somebody that he has to motivate. And I believe he even said... When I call certain players, if I don't feel it in their voice, if it's like that I'm trying to convince them to play for the Italian national team, that's not a player that I want part of the squad, which I think is great for him. The other additions, and then I'll open it up to you guys, for Loroncho and uh, Lorenzo Luca. Gaetano has something on his mind he wants to say. No, I mean, Zaniolo, come on, give me a break. I mean, you're still called Zaniolo, you still call... Uh uh, some of these players that they, I don't think they belong there. But the the player that I, I wanted to see was called Pani. Yeah, I wanted to see, uh, you know, because you, you guys show me the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, he ordered his jersey the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I saw the highlights. I mean, the guy runs a uh, hundred miles an hour. He goes back and forth. He takes a shot. This guy, he scores goals. Um, Calafiori. 
It, we didn't know about the forties with the U twenty ones. I don't know about his defensive. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's a very attacking player. player. Yeah, it is a very, but I would I would have liked to see better than Zaniol. I mean, uh, I agree. Let, let put him mm. there, yeah. and I'm excited for Florencio. 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 Check him out. Yo, he's yeah, been he's playing good. in Serie C most of his life. <laughs> this is his first year in Serie A. He scored, obviously, the great goal against Juventus. But he's a very interesting player that I'm happy. That That's one of the merit-based ones. What do you think, Pete? Now, listen, the, these uh, call-ups, especially for friendlies, is obviously a preparation for the Euros coming up. But also maybe for Spalletti to take a closer look at some of the guys live, right? So... Until you have him in training session, until you see him on the day to day, you don't know how these guys react, especially when it comes to the interpersonal level that Spalletti wants, right? So maybe, you know, Zaniolo, for example, Spalletti maybe wants to take this time to kind of put him under a microscope yeah. and be able to identify is this player serious or will, can he be of service for us? Or not? Okay, but then how do you how do you justify? Him? Okay, he left off Chido Mobile, which I agree with mm -hmm. because he's saying he's not playing consistently. Zanula has like seven starts for Aston Villa, so how do you have one but not the he's other? He's younger. I think it doesn't matter. But the the point is, he was saying I'm only calling guys that are playing consistently for their club. So which one is it? I think for the striker position, there's more of a crapshoot in a sense where I don't think anything is solidified there. Whereas maybe that position with Zaniolo. He already has an idea of what he wants. Whether Zaniolo's there or not, that's up to him. But a striker position, I think he still has a big question mark there. Is Bellanova the first time that he's been called in? Um, I'm not sure if it's the first time. I, he's a very interesting I player. Like for the, I like him. I mean, I, I've said it before, but Di Lorenzo, I, I don't no, want him seeing him playing as a wing back. It, it's not, it, it, last year, he played extremely well. Yeah, for Napoli, year, but this year everyone is, played well for Napoli last year. No, this I would I would not put him in that mm, that place. You got to find a place, Darmian, a way to put Darmian. Even though he probably wants Darmian as the right center back in the back three, but uh, or Bellanova if he could become a surprise and and really be something important. Um, one other thing that Spalletti said because obviously we're all going to the games. We're going to the game on Sunday with many people, and we actually we decided the winner of the giveaway. What's his name that's coming with us? Anthony Surusco. That was on the top of my mind Anthony right Surusco is going to be joining sure with us. Name? I'm pretty sure. Did he confirm? What is he coming he from? Confirmed. Connecticut. Oh, Ooh. is he? Yeah. Nice. Nice trip down. We're going to be doing uh, tailgating. Let's uh, do it. <clears throat> 12 p.m. main parking lot. That's where we're going to be. That's what uh, the, the graphic that's going around. Our buddy Gianluca Palanca is sending it all oh, up. Okay. He said, saw uh, but it, I saw it, but he didn't put IFTV. <laughs> well, because we're not the one organized. He's doing all the work. We'll spray paint everybody. it after we're <laughs> uh, Bring some food. Giuseppe. Bring some drinks. IFTV. What kind of food's going to be there? What's on the menu? What are you bringing? I'm going to go to Villa Bate. <laughs> heroes, some heroes. Yo, you that no, 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 no. I'm going to bring some Peter 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 I want to make spritz. Peter is going to be, Peter is gonna be bringing cold cards up. Right, Pete? Of course. Cold we'll cards, bring man. something. Of course. And then we'll share. We'll bring a ball. Uh, but Luciano Spalletti, he's been massive on talking about Italians abroad and the Italians who moved away from Italy for a better life, uh, just like you two, who the you know you guys both immigrated to this country. He said about uh, playing these games in the U.S., we're going to pay tribute to the 20 million people that are waiting for us there and want to see us. We owe a lot to our co compatriots that live there. Compatriots That's that live right. there in the United States, talking about Italian-Americans, which I thought it was nice because... Personally, I never remember the coach of the Italian national team ever talking about Italians that are outside of Italy. Yeah, it's nice. Mm. I thought it was a nice little gesture. Well, well spoken. I will, uh, when I see him, I will, uh, I will <laughs> thank, thank him. You. I think that would be nice. If, if, you're, if you see Spalletti, let him know that we, yeah. we realize it. We understand it. He even said before, he's like, you don't realize that people abroad, just like you guys, take so much pride. You take even more pride in the in Italian then national the team because it's the, your connection back yeah. To the mainland. Okay, so let's. Wh why don't we just uh, just uh, put on the table the real difference between Italian American and American Italian? Oh, this is big. Nah. Caetano don't and I. Don't start. Caetano yeah. and I. We are Italian American because we were raised and born over there. Uh -huh. Actually, me, I was raised and born. You guys. Somehow, somehow uh, half bootlegs, but you never left <laughs> your Italian. Well, technically, you guys Italian. are just Italians. You, you, guys are just, anyway. you guys are just Italians. No, they're Italian American. No. I want to say I think you are Italian. We are Italian American. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very proud to be Ita He's American Ita too. You guys are Italian American. Very proud to be American. Are. Very proud to be what? American no. too. What's Italian the definition? American. It's where you grew up. We are know. Italian American. You're American Italian. It's the way that they act. You know, there's a lot of aspects of their mentality, the way that they see things. Because you're talking donuts in the morning. Because 
I, we used to have meetings, uh, right, uh, like, uh, at, at the office in the city, and I used to show up with half a liter of coffee, uh, and everybody had the American espresso, coffee? and they look, yeah, American and everybody coffee. looks to look at me and say, what is, what's wrong with this guy hey, here? But you are American, I'm uh, uh, American. Because Romano. I, you had American I, coffee, not yeah, espresso. I had a half a liter, but that half a liter, it lasted me for two, three hours. They yeah. used to go like this, that's and that's the coffee was gone, yeah. so I liked that. So that's one of the things so. of... Uh, What's the biggest difference between an Italian and an Italian-American, Peter? Oof, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you, you pronounce it mozz? Uh, Mozzarella? The pronunciation. Moots. 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 Stop. Stop. By the way, you know how many people Antonio's going to try to get? Uh, don't worry. Don't give, don't, give don't give it up. Don't give it up. Don't give it up. Because ultimately, you know, we're all... Because by Italian law, it's by your bloodline. So technically, you're wrong. It's Juri Sanguinis. So in Italy, that's why, for example, Balotelli, <laughs> even though he was born in Italy, he had to wait till he was 18 years old to receive Italian citizenship. citizenship. Yeah. How come because I can't get my citizenship? In Greece, too, it's the same because thing. Because somebody renounced their citizenship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I like how they look. <laughs> Italian-American over here. Yeah. <laughs> American-Italian. Not on purpose. He didn't renounce on purpose. The law changed in 1994. I never renounced my citizenship. <laughs> it was wild. That Are that you was lying? We didn't mind. This would be funny. We'll have grown up Italian, Sabino, Rocco, your friends mm, will that's be there. Nice. Maybe we'll ask this question mm -hmm. to the people. They got the panini. Uh, oh, yeah? But the the panini so shop. They're, they're going to tailgate with us? Paisa. They're going to tailgate with us? Yeah, they're going to tailgate with us. Oh, that's nice. All right. Let's move on. That's nice. Got a question for the group. By the way, for the tailgating, I have two... Two of my uh, uh, friends from Boston, you know, my neighbor, the nice. daughters that are coming over. Your neighbor? Yeah, yeah. My neighbor from, from, uh, from Boston? Neighbor from Boston? Bari. from Bari. Oh, from Bari. From oh. Bari. We're next door neighbors okay. and then they're going to come and join us. Okay. Uh, we, we don't have them sitting next to us because we couldn't, uh, you know, the seating was already, was already all gone. And uh, But uh, they're going to definitely join us. Uh, I'm going to be driving them uh, to the mm -hmm. to the game. And back, uh, thanks back for bringing thanks this. Thanks for that yeah. 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 And uh, big fan of IFTV. Nice. Big fan of IFTV. Uh, you know, cool. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Can I go to the top? Basically. He's a stool. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Question for the group. I'm going to go to you first. Did the Italian American, <laughs> <laughs> the American Italian, <laughs> has Daniele De Rossi earned a contract extension at Roma? Francesco Totti said he never expected De Rossi to be this good this fast. He's improved basically every player. He's put Zvilar in net. They've got six clean sheets since he's been there. They look amazing with him in goal. Pellegrini is a completely different player. Six goals and three assists under De Rossi. Under Mourinho, all season, Pellegrini had three goals and one assist. And what he says is, I have freedom. I'm at the center of the game, which in the last year and a half, I did not have. He feels himself a lot more. Since De Rossi joined, they have the second most goals in the entire league. Actually, the most goals. They have the second most points after Inter. So, what do you say? And I saw the, the hug that uh, Pellegrini gave De Rossi after that goal. Oh my God, they were squeezing each other. Yes, De Rossi deserves an extension. And b before we continue, I, you were very strongly on um, Mourinho sacking. You, you were really mad about that, saying he right. should never have left. Right. Has, has it changed at all with how well no. De Rossi is playing? No. No, because you don't know what Mourinho could have done. Mourinho, remember Take that he had two finals. Yeah. He took Roma to two European yeah, finals yeah. and, and one, he won one. one. Okay, yeah. so let's just leave it like that. Darossi is is done a great job. I love Darossi. Um, what went wrong though? What went wrong? Focus, let's focus and, on the uh, positives. And uh, let's focus on Darossi. He has earned an extension for next year. What do you guys think? One hundred percent. With you know the performances, I think it's the different ways that he can win. Uh, you know, statement wins obviously versus a Brighton. Uh, he deserves an extension. He is he is Roma. You know, second to Totti, but yet still someone that's that's there that knows the environment. And you know, when you come into a season, especially dealing with Roma, uh, you know, and and their fans, it's not always easy. But I think he was able to to really command uh, the respect and get the respect of this team. Next year, I think it's a different approach. 
because now you start from from mm-hmm. a preseason. Obviously, Roma need to figure out what they're going to do, uh, you know, in the off season as far as the market and the financials. And there's a lot of things that are still unknown. But I think one thing that is certain is that Rossi is going to get the players' respect and he's going to give his all. You know, I got to tell you something. I, I mean, I was not really skeptical like you guys about that Rossi, but I said, this guy, he's think I think he's got a great chance to just reset the all the all uh, uh, Roma team uh, to the to be uh, to be the, the team that we are enjoying watching right now. So it took a, there were so many moving parts in the in this team here that uh, I mean they were all over the places. The Rossi has come to this team here. This you see the the player mentally motivated. You see the the joy that they play soccer. They just move the ball. The team works like a, on twelve full cylinder at the same time. They, I mean, you say six, six clean sheets, right? Six clean sheets is not easy in Serie A. And now with Abraham coming in, which is going to be an extra, an extra luxury. When's that happening? No, it's probably he just next sat week on the bench. I just feel like it's, it's been happening. Happening. I feel like it's it's happening. Happening. like three seasons. I got so, uh, since the last game hey, of uh, last season. The numbers they don't lie. Roma under Mourinho, they were just held back. With De Rossi, it's, it's it's an attacking team. With uh, with Mourinho, it's wait and see, wait and counter, wait and counter. With De Rossi, it's just go for go for. It's a and, like said, there. and like Gaetano said, after the here. first goal, De Rossi <laughs> said, it doesn't say set back. Just De Rossi said, keep going. <laughs> Keep, that's what the Italian do, the real Italian, uh, Italian American. You are American Italian. You are American, American Italian. Italian is don't understand. He's the so, panettiere. You're, to make you're, a long make story short, bread. De Rossi not only Baker. deserves an extension, <laughs> he needs a two years contract and he needs to be paid what he deserves to get paid. Mikey? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty okay. obvious. Okay. Yeah, he right. deserves a, a, fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air for this Roma side that looked like they were on the downhill. But yeah, like Aitano said, I I agree with you. We got to respect what Mourinho did. But I think it was time for a change after all. And I think you could see it throughout this this team. So talking about one manager who's overachieving to one that's underachieving. Last topic of the day. Talking about Milan again? (laughs) No, not Milan. (laughs) Allegri. Max Allegri. You're a genius. You were able to pick that out. (laughs) Teams are no longer scared to go to Allianz Stadium and to play against Juventus. I watched the Genoa side that played with three attackers. Three attackers against Juventus. There used to be teams that they would lose before they even stepped on the pitch to play Juventus. Today, they're they're not scared at all. That was one of the worst games I've ever watched of Juventus. And that's saying something. For this to be one of the worst, it was a tough watch at 7.30 in the morning, especially the first half. One win in your last eight games. And let me mention some of the teams that are within those eight games. Empoli. Udinese, Verona, Frosinone, and Genoa. Wow, 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 wow. From bad, bad to worse from Juventus and completely uninspiring. And then top, to top it all off, in the 60th minute, you're 0-0 against Genoa, <clears throat> and you're scared to keep Chiesa on and to play Chiesa, Yildiz, and Dusan Vlaovic. He takes Chiesa out. <sighs> That's horrible. Where are we going with this? I got to tell you something. This Allegri, Allegri, I think he has uh, dug his own grave. Okay, because uh, you know, you know, you know, you 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 are making the same mistake week on and week off. I mean, every week is the same nonsense. We're talking about the same topic every week. Just let them play the way they're capable to play. Just let them lose. Let them lose. And if they make a mistake, then you pointed to them. I said, you see, you see. But it, it never happens. Allegri is a control, is a control freak. He has to have a total control of every single player, every single move that they make, and every change that he makes. He demands. I said, <laughs> you just go from here to here. Make sure you don't do this, this, or this. Because if you do, you're not going back into the game for the rest of your life. So I see people playing scared. <laughs> they play scared. You don't see the joy of, of Juventus player just going into the field and then making all of those tricks here and there. Bam, 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 bam. You don't see that anymore. That Piero used to just give the the you know the, the taco. Piero's a whole other level of play. Oh my on. goodness gracious! What happened with Juventus? Where are the, you know the, the young kids that were looking at those champs? They were they were inspiring themselves. As soon as the game was over, you go back to the yard and you try to do exactly what they tried mm-hmm. to uh, what they tried to do on the field. These guys are very boring. They're very very boring to watch. 
did they just, I watched the game at 730 because I was curious. I said, I want to really watch what is going on. I put the game on. I was 20 minutes into the game, but the game was a disgrace. A mm. total disgrace. If you're not a Juventus fan, if you're a general fan, you go back to sleep. You don't watch that game. I just stood up. He was excited to see how they were playing, right? Nothing. No, nothing. but you know what I mean. So, yeah. Chiesa, Chiesa is struggling in that position, I think. Everyone's struggling. You know? It's, what do you think, P? The thing is, Allegri doesn't offer anything, any hope, anything new for this Juventus team. I think now that Juntoli has his full year, he's got to make a decision. And I think the decision is, let's go for a coach that is going to aspire to play a certain style mm -hmm. while also making sure that we are winning. We have the talent. We have the players. We need to find players that are going to play for Juventus but are going to gel with this team. Mm -hmm. And there might be decisions that have to be made mm -hmm. that you know fans might not be happy with, but ultimately it's got to be for the greater good of the team. It's time for a change. You know, It's time to get some uh, somebody else new. I think for this year... Is 12 points from Atalanta. Atalanta is in sixth place. So if we get the five teams, it's 12 points from there. So it's pretty much into the Champions League. I think five points from uh, from Roma. Bologna. From Bologna. No, but Bologna uh, from Roma is in fifth place. Roma has 51. Yeah. Or oh, eight points. Yeah. Eight yeah. points from Bologna. Uh, from uh, from Roma. Uh, from, uh, from Roma. Yeah. So I think the Champions League is going to manage a way to get to the Champions League. But once the year is over, you need a change. You know, I, I got to say you something. You spoke already. Yeah, no, but <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to say something. You have to wait your crazy. turn, Anto. Anto, you got to wait your turn. Those American Italians. I'm an Italian Americans. Let me just say something. You said it already. Juventus, like, <laughs> Two times. Juventus is nine points away to clinch the Champions League. All right? A spot whether it's going to be the third, the fourth uh, no. team, or whatever the case might be. But at mm. the end of the day, I wanted to see whether an experiment a la, a la uh, De Rossi can mm. work with Juventus. Bring me a coach that is capable to That's bring what's there in Juventus and make them play soccer the proper way. I think Juventus has got talent. It's got a lot of talent. Yeah, of course. The thing is that those talent, they're, exactly. not, they're not performing because they've been held The back. only one who could do that would be Del Piero, but he's not a coach. Mm -hmm. Even though I think he took the, he went to school. I think he was with Bobo Vieri. Yeah, the, we Cassano, uh, I think, went there too. Yeah, right? I think that the Bobo Vieri put in a, a, a video where Del Piero was sleeping or something. <laughs> so he did. They were both the Coverciano. He did take the. Uh, I think Del Piero would be if he wanted to coach. He could come in and do something. What about Cassano? Like what about like Cassano? Alla, alla De Rossi. But that's what about Cassano? The, what if At De Rossi. Uh, Gaetano Messina. <laughs> Gaetano Messina. But that might ruin his image, guys. That's a lot to put on the line. Cool. Imagine, like, Del Piero. He's, you're just saying because compared to what De, De Rossi means nah. to Roma. Yeah. Right, that's my comparison. Yeah. Piero's means to you. I get it, but there's a lot on the line. No, but he's not, he's not a coach. No, he's, he's not, not a coach. coach. He doesn't want to coach, but he did. He could be a manager. We also didn't... Did we finish on this topic? Yeah. No, you don't say, Mike. Wait, well, no, don't worry. No, Even no, though you're not American, Italian, move, or Italian, American. No, I was going to move on to the next thing because before we end. Is he was, Greek or Greek American? It's a Greek American. Or American? No, American Greek. Greek. Okay, okay. I don't. That's the, okay. I don't. It's think not it's, French. A French just, Greek, <laughs> which is a freak. Which is a freak. It's, you can't flip it like that. Oh, it doesn't work. I was going to say uh, Lazio sack <laughs> Asari. One. We forgot to mention yeah. that. I think that was a, a big one. It kind of came out of the blue. It was. It was like. Uh, there's a lot of reports that was going to happen. We weren't really sure. Then it came out of nowhere. And they ended up winning their match against Frosinone. And that was a good start. But regardless, they signed Igor Tudor, which I think is a very good replacement. Who Napoli were... There was talks about him uh, going for Spalletti he didn't on want, the replacement. He didn't want the uh, mid-season job. Or he something. didn't want a, a short contract. Yeah, yeah, he wanted a, the extra year. So with Lazio, he got a year and a half. With uh, De Laurentiis, he only offered him six months. Hmm. But I think there's positive news for all Lazio fans. I think Tudor plays that new modern kind of football. He was... Who's... Um, Verona. No, he was yeah. Verona's coach. Marseille. But who, who else was he uh, the second coach? Pirlo. To? Pirlo at Juventus, right? Uh -huh. And a lot of ideas. I think Pirlo complimented him for a lot of the ideas he helped out. So I'm actually excited to see Lazio. And they got a Greek keeper now that's been that played the last match. Who's so this? I'm, 
Mandas. Mandas. That's he's not name. gonna start over Provedel. No, but I'm saying Provedel right now he's injured. So right, he he played last game and hopefully he's playing over Sepe, which is really good. Sepe is I I rate him a very good goalkeeper. Mm. So to put a young keeper like that, I'm We're excited. We're happy for you. Mm. Forza Lazio, baby. <laughs> so I feel bad for Sadi. Sadi, uh, I think he could have done a lot of good for uh, this Lazio side. I think that he way overachieved last year. Uh, and I respect him as a person because there's not many coaches that would put away their salary so that Lazio could have a reaction from a different coach. Most want to be sacked. They say, no, you forced me to be sacked so I could sit on the couch and keep getting paid. Sadi's not one of those type of coaches. He uh, really loves the game. He loves the sport. And I think he was set up to fail with his uh, Lazio side with the way that uh, Lotito manages the team. With what you said with um, Sade stepping down rather than getting sacked so he doesn't get the remainder of his uh, contract money, I believe there was a quote with Ancelotti that said, I would never step down uh, for a job. Every every person, every single mm. person in this world is different. No, every I coach yeah, is yeah. different. Sade, 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 Sade said that he will coach in Serie C, in Eccellenza, whatever it is to be able to play. There are certain coaches like Allegri that say the only thing that matters is the result. And then there's the flip side. The only thing that matters is the way that you obtain the result. They are as opposite as it gets. So Ancelotti and Sarri, they see things in different ways. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's just different styles. And mm. I think we'll see a Mauricio Sarri that goes to a lower level, a level where there's not the pressure to play in all these different competitions, or at least the pressure to compete. I think that uh, he's a student of the game. He loves the sport. He wants young kids that can adopt his style of play rather than let me just obtain the winners and see them move past the mark. I don't know. I just, uh, you know, Sarri to me uh, is uh, one of those, um, you know, we kept calling him the maestro. It's like a, it's like a, uh, that Zeman mentality. The guy, he wants to see the people enjoying and just, uh, you know, yeah. display the soccer mentality that they, that they inculcated on the, on the mind of on those people. Americans. So, yeah. You know, those, uh, don't forget that uh, Immobile, <laughs> Insigne and Verratti, they were part of the, of this uh, Zeman uh, Pescara, trio yeah. in Pescara. Yeah, yeah. So I would I would say like Sarri has got the, this kind of a joy of coaching that has to be, hey, it's about the game and it the is. money, yeah. but the money, when it comes down to the point of said whether I'm staying because of the money, it's no longer that important. So it's not it's his the, first objective. But right. you, you like Sarri? I don't like him that much. You don't like him that much. But you respect his decision. I respect it. I respect it. You just talked talk good about him. No, yeah. I'm saying I said I, I see some similarity in his mentality that it's not about the only about the money. It's about the you know the game and the, the way uh, you know he wants the team to play. Right. And uh, but I guess the way the team plays, do you do you like it? Eh, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I don't like. It's not Motta. It's not Motta. I like Gilardino more than I like him. Right. I like Palladino. Italiano. I like a lot of other coaches uh, before I like Sarri. Understood. Okay. But right. I don't hate. I don't hate him. I can have a beer with him <laughs> just you, right you now. Say that. I, was just <laughs> I don't hate him. I, can, I think yeah. the guy we, could be the best we guy. We get your point. We get the your point. The guy could be you one of my best friends. Reason. We can have a beer right now, hey, uh, Mr. Sarri. No, no smoking here. The here, beer is on me. No smoking in here. No smoking. That's a problem. That's a problem. He's out of here. Anything else to add? No, I think Sadi once he saw that the project was was done and dusted, he's like, let me let me go. And the funny thing is, is his assistant changed something because Sadi, you know, unfortunately, also when you deal with these bigger players, you can't be so rigid. I think one thing, you know, obviously we yeah. talk about Allegri, blah 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 blah, but Allegri is a man manager. I think I thought, you know. And, and a lot of players would would like him. Obviously, he's had problems. Bonucci, we know, Vlahovic, yeah, maybe, but. You know, Sadi, so the assistant coach, he changed practice from the afternoon to the morning, which mm. you would think that's such a easy thing to do, right? But I guess with Sadi, he had to train in the that's afternoon. <laughs> Yo, I'm having two doors. <laughs> that's, that's all I got to do. You think about that during the week, right? You, you have your, your family, crazy. kids coming out of school, all those different stuff, or just being able to get something done in the morning. Yeah. Like, if the players ask for it, you would think that's easy to... To change. To change. Yeah. Apparently, well, a lot of the players spoke really well about it. Oh, like, I think Bado Seed said, like, you know, we wouldn't have anything without Sadri. Like, there's of a course. lot. Of, he had problems in the locker room. But from what I heard, and I think Martuscello actually said that there were players that were crying and wanted uh, Sadri to stay. But he took tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Kidding, kidding. But uh, kidding. but he said that uh, for Lazio, he felt like they need something new to come in, yeah, a new spark, for sure. uh, which could be Igor Turgor. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. We'll speak to you soon. Ciao, Ciao guys. Ciao.